should you use an automation tool like Zapier to combine a bunch of different apps, platforms, and tools in order to create your larger overarching app? Or should you use a platform like Bubble where you can build your entire app from scratch instead? That's what we're gonna talk about today because depending on your goals, the path you take should look a little bit different. Now make sure you stick around until the end because we're also going to talk about how you can actually combine the two approaches at a larger scale as you grow your app and business as well. So make sure you stick around for that. Now first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding and with no technical background required. So when entrepreneurs come to us, sometimes they're trying to figure out whether they should string together a series of tools, platforms, and apps using something like Zapier, which helps those platforms and apps communicate with each other, or whether they should build something from scratch. And of course, their ultimate goal is to both scale their app and their business, whether their business is something that they're they're building their app for to use internally, or whether their business is something that they want to grow from the app that they're building. Okay, so we're going to break this down today so you can take the best approach for yourself and for your app. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and we're going to jump over to the whiteboard here so we can talk through this. Now, what I want you to first understand are the differences, the core differences between how something like Zapier or another automation tool might work for you versus how using a no-code platform like Bubble might work for you as well. So if you look at these top squares or these boxes on our screen here, what I want you to think of are the different tools or the different apps that might come together to form your entire app. Or if you were using something like Zapier, for example, to create the back end of your business, imagine these different boxes being the different types of tools that you use, okay? So for example, let's say you have a, you're building an app and you wanna have a checkout, a payment processor, right? So let's say right here, you have a checkout feature, okay? So let's look at these boxes as like those apps or those features, the tools you might use, okay? Now, next to that, you might have uh, an email service provider. You might wanna send emails to your users. Maybe you, you know, when they go through the checkout, you want to then start them going through a series of emails or something like that, okay? Now, maybe over here, you have something like an inventory system. And this could even be attached to something like Google Sheets, right? You might have uh, different things being stored and, and sent to different parts and, and pieces and, and platforms, okay? So maybe you have an inventory you wanna keep track of. Uh, maybe you have a calendar. Maybe this is an internal calendar and a user or maybe a customer facing calendar. And let's say over here you have a user registration. Okay, so you want to maybe create users within your app so that you can interact with them or maybe your employees can interact with them or, or something like that, however you wanna look at it. Okay, so each of these boxes is a different feature of your overarching app. And there can be tons more of these, right? Uh, you know, double this, triple this, whatever you want. But these are the features of your app. Now, when you use something like Zapier, what you're doing is you're essentially allowing each of these different components to talk to each other, to communicate with each other, right? It doesn't have to go through, the communication doesn't have, have to happen in a line like this, right? You can have, you know, your, your uh, email communicating with your calendar, your registration communicating with your calendar, things like that, right? But something like Zapier is an automation tool where if something happens, in one of these boxes, then something will happen in another one of these boxes, okay? So when you are creating an app like this, again, whether it's for external use, something you're going to be bringing external users on board, or something for 
internal use. You have to find services to provide each of these features. So you have to pay for a, a payment gateway, a checkout service provider. You have to pay for an email service provider, right? You have to pay for a calendar booking tool, all of these different things. And then using Zapier essentially just brings them all together. Now, this is, this is fine. This is not a bad approach, right? Um, but it does mean that you, you're not able to customize as much as you might want to. It also means that you're likely going to be spending a lot of money because you're not able to actually create anything in-house. You're always reliant on outside tools. So you're sacrificing sometimes, oftentimes on the budget because there's usually monthly or annual subscriptions. You're sacrificing on the customization. Okay. Now you might not need that and that's okay, but that's kind of what you're looking at when you're using an automation tool um, like Zapier. Okay, now on the flip side, what does it look like if you were to use a no-code platform like Bubble, okay? So as opposed to Zapier, let's say you actually want to customize your checkout. You want to send emails from your, from your own app. Um, you want to, you know, you want to have your own inventory system. You want to have your own dashboard. You want to have a calendar inside your app. You want to be able to register your own users and have that database and, and be able to uh, control everything. Okay. So if you were wanting to build something from scratch that you fully control in terms of the customization and in terms of the expenses too, right? Because if you're building things from scratch, then you're not paying so many subscription fees, right? Well, then you can kind of take each of those boxes, each of those features, right? And really just combine them into one foundational layer. So in looking at this, this uh, middle rectangle with the boxes inside of it, picture this as being an app that you build on Bubble. So again, you might have your checkout, you might have your email, your inventory, Right, your calendar and your registration, but you can build all of these things and you can customize them to your own needs, right? And, and everything is by default able to communicate because it's all built within the same platform. So you don't have to use an outside tool in order to trigger actions to happen within your app, right? The if this, then that, those types of actions already happen within your app because you're creating them within your app, okay? And, and of course, with something like, like Bubble, a, a no-code app development platform, it's, it's the same thing with Zapier, you're not coding, right? You're not actually going into the app and coding anything. You're using no-code tools, so both Zapier and different uh, payment gateways, email service providers, calendar tools, all of those things are all no-code tools, right? You're just stringing them together with another no-code tool like Zapier. Whereas in the middle of the screen here where we're combining everything, now you're taking a no-code app building platform and you're building everything you want within that platform, okay? So how does this, how does this differ? Or, or which, which route should you go rather? It really depends on your goals, right? So what I often find is when entrepreneurs come to us and they, they have been using something like Zapier, as they start to expand and scale, they end up having a really hard time managing everything because you have to manage all of these different platforms. And again, if you look at this, this top row here, this set of five features, an app and an, an entire business is gonna have a lot more than five features, right? And so if you imagine, you know, double, triple, quadruple this row and you have all these different tools, sheets, platforms, everything communicating with each other and you're using something like Zapier or another similar tool to help all these triggers happen, it gets really big, really fast. 
And it's there's a lot of different platforms that you have to manage and work within, right? Um, and so what, what I find a lot of people experiencing is they need something that's a lot more streamlined, something that gives their users a more streamlined experience that's not so disjointed across so many different platforms, and it gives themselves a more streamlined experience in managing and growing their app as well, because on the backside, they don't have to manage all of these different tools and, and automations, right? Instead, they can just combine everything into one app and grow on top of that. So if you have a very limited number of features, really, that you want to provide, then using something like Zapier could be a good starting place. Right? But if you actually want that customization and that complete control over your app, then building it on top of an app development platform versus just combining a bunch of different no-code apps that already exist could be a better route. Now, I mentioned we'd be looking at, at what, what this could look like at a larger scale. And this is where the, the power of no-code app development platforms like Bubble really, really comes out. So let's say down here, you have your app, okay? Now picture this being the app that we talked about right here, okay? So everything up here is now the foundation of your app down here. Okay, so this is your core app, right? What, what you can do when you're actually building everything out on a platform like Bubble is you can start then adding in other no-code tools on top of that and other outside services on top of that. So the one thing to keep in mind is while you can build the core of your app from scratch so that it's customized to your needs, so that you don't have to manage a bunch of different apps and platforms. And so, so you can really keep your costs down. If you're doing that at the foundation, well, what you can start adding on top of that are APIs. You can start using APIs. And what you can do with APIs is if you don't want to build a certain feature from scratch, or if you need for some reason to use an outside service for something specific within your app, maybe you need to pull data from an outside service. Well, you can have your core app and then you can connect to these outside services via API. And that allows you to pull information in, uh, in a really streamlined way. So instead of having to go and, and use something like Zapier to, trigger all these things to happen between your app and outside services, you can just connect via API. And it's kind of like cutting out the middleman. So there's less pieces involved in the communication. It's a lot more streamlined. Okay, so you can do that. You can add APIs on top of this. And now the way I really like to look at this is you can still use something like Zapier or some other automation tool, right? So let's say, you still have other, other processes you want to automate. Well, then you can start using Zaps for the things that make sense to automate. So for example, one of the things that we like to do with our own business is we have our systems in place, right? We've built custom systems for our own businesses to run using Bubble. And we have connected to outside services that we specifically need with APIs. And we still use tools like Zapier to automate some of our backend processes. So when something happens in our business and we want another thing to be automated, like um, you know, some sort of record keeping task or some sort of administrative task that can be automated that we don't really need to be doing manually, well, then we add zaps and we can just build on top of the foundation that we already have. So at scale, as you grow your app, as you grow your business, 
When you start by building the core of your app on a no-code development platform, then you can connect via APIs and then you can add zaps or other automations on top of that to help your own systems run more smoothly. Then you can see how all of this really starts to scale. Okay. So in looking at, you know, what, what should you use? Should you use something like Zapier? Should you build everything from scratch? Well, it really depends. If you're looking for the customization, the more streamlined management, really ownership over your app and building exactly what you want and often at a lower cost because you don't have to pay all the, the subscription fees, then it makes sense to start with a no-code app development platform. And then you can always add on, use APIs. You can use Zaps to automate some different processes internally as well. So everything can actually be used together. It just depends on your own goals as to when you use each of these things. So I hope that's helpful in making sure you're moving forward in the right direction with your app. Now, if you've just started with your app, or if you haven't started yet, you want to make sure you're headed in the right direction as you take your next steps, then I want to invite you to join in on a free 75-minute workshop that we've put together. It takes you through a, a series of strategic steps to help plan your app out, create a roadmap. We talk about some no-code tools that you can leverage to bring that app to life. And, and really just guide you forward so that you can push your app forward strategically and correctly without having to do a bunch of backtracking, which we want you to avoid. So if you want to join in on that, you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.